Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Vicky. I am the Business Development Manager here in Western Australia. Um, today we're looking at BYOD with CompNow and um, Shenton College. Today we've got joining us um, Andrew Gallagher. He's over in Melbourne. He's the Portals Manager. And we've also got Simon Hawks from Shenton College. Hey Simon, um, how are you going? Hi. Hi. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Thank you. Um, I think we'll just throw straight over to you, Simon, very quickly. If you wouldn't mind just telling us a little bit about yourself in terms of how long you've been at Shenton College and what you what you guys do there. Okay. Um, I've been at Shenton for this is my thirteenth year. Um, we are a public school. We're an independent public school. We're based in the western suburbs, which is the desirable bit of Perth to live in, as I'm sure a lot of people realise. Um, we are quite a large school. Uh, we have nearly 2,600 students enrolled this year. And also we had our largest cohort of incoming sevens. Uh, we had about 500 joiners this year. So uh, we've undergone a lot of growth over the time I've been here and uh, uh, introduced a lot of laptops to students in that time as well. Oh, awesome. And um, so in terms of BYOD, um, why did you guys actually decide that BYOD was the best program to be able to support your school? Okay. Well, initially we got going on our one-to-one -one program with the federal government DER money that was handed out in sort of 2008, 2009. Um we decided to move to a parent-funded model when, when that funding dried up because um, at that time uh, it would have cost us about half a million dollars a year to provide um, uh, laptops to the incoming sevens each year. And so um, that was just too, too expensive. That was 10 years ago. Uh, if we did that sum now, it would probably be closer to three-quarters of a million dollars that we'd have to find annually to, to, to provide laptops to the incoming sevens because of these 500 kids came in. Um, there's also a distinct advantage to having a, a, a parent-funded uh, uh, system in that um, when they own the laptops, uh, they tend to get better looked after. When we were just giving away free laptops uh, to kids, uh, um, we did an awful lot of repairs um, and uh, the responsibility was all ours. So it's, it's actually a better model than, than free laptops. Mm, absolutely. Well, um, do you guys actually manage them centrally? And when you have a really good BYOD program, which I think your, yours is, do you think that you need to have that central management in place to be able to make it a good program? Um, so, well, we, we, we manage what are nearly 3,000 Apple devices. So that's the student and staff, uh, the BYOD and, and the school loan. We use, um, we use enterprise software. We use Jamf Pro, which anyone that manages a large number of Macs will be well aware of. It's considered mm -hmm. the best of be product in this space. It's a, an MDM. Um, we couldn't uh, live without it. I mean, it's expensive, but it's probably half the price of a senior technician. And um, um, as I say, I, I don't think we'd function without it. So, yes, central management's a good idea. Um, it, it means that our, our devices are patched regularly, that we can distribute software, those sorts of things. Yeah, cool. Um, and so for your BYOD program, you obviously have Macs. Why did you decide that Mac was the best device for your program? Okay. When we first started planning for a one-to-one -one, um, uh, laptop student environment, we, we, we recognised there was value in getting both students and staff all into the same ecosystem um, purely to simplify the teaching and learning. Uh, it, it, as a public school, it's quite expensive to try to be all things to all people. Um, so we, we went for the, the simple model. Um, although we did redesign our, our network um, to make it a, a, a kind of a large internet cafe with good security um, so that we can handle virtually any wireless device, whether it be a laptop or a tablet or a phone, whether it be Mac or Windows, because we thought things may change over time, but the way mm. it panned out, we've stayed with Mac and we very much stayed with Mac laptop. We haven't really gone down the iOS path. When we first started back in 2009, iPads are still fairly new. Um, and not a great educational tool, a good way to receive content, but not a great way to generate content. 
Mm -hmm, absolutely. So, um, and the other thing that I wanted to kind of ask you about as well, um, with you guys deciding that BYOD was the best way for you guys to move forward with your program, um, like you said before, if the if the family is actually on the device, um, you find that they get looked after a little bit better. How do you encourage um, families to actually buy the recommend from the recommended channel that you you know with the being a Department of Education school? I know that you can't dictate how and what they need to purchase. How do you guys navigate that process? All right. Um, well. We really sell that message about every, getting everyone on the same page in the classroom to enhance the teaching and learning. Most people get that. If, they, if you're the, the random kid on the random laptop running some random operating system, you're going to have a hard time of it at Shenton College. Mm. Um, we're not trying to make it hard, but, you know, most over 95% of our kids are on the Mac platform. So the kid that's trying to support themselves in the classroom, who, who's look and feel who's way of doing things is slightly different from every other kid in that classroom is disadvantaged. So I think most parents get that. It's 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 the best point that you can make is that they probably will be disadvantaged if they move away from our recommended device, okay? It's, it's, it's not a huge leap. Um, we also state that we, that we get, we clearly state that we get no financial kickback from our recommended supplier. So people want to hear that. They want to hear. They don't want to hear that a public school is making money out of any deal with a, a particular vendor. So, um, and I think it's important to clearly state that. Um, but we, at the same time, we say, well, but this deal is extremely well priced and a very comprehensive solution that is suited to most families, and most people sort of understand that, and that gets ninety percent of people. Um, we also mentioned that they don't have to do it and that they can feel free to shop around and they may pop down the road to check it in Harvey Norman's or JB Hi-Fi or whatever it is, and they'll come back and they'll recognise if they truly are comparing apples with apples um, in that they're looking at the extended warranty, they're looking at the insurance option, that the deal is good. So they, they often come back even they've had to poke around. Um, we also say, and um, this is a feature of having a, a, a sort of a resilient network, that if they have an existing laptop at home, that's fine. It doesn't have to be a new MacBook Air from Computers Now. It can be that three-year-old Windows device if you really want to or mum's old MacBook Pro. You know, that's fine. We can accommodate all of that on our network. And, of course, that wins a lot of people as well because then they don't have to find that $1,500, $2,000, whatever it is. So we've, yeah. we've tried to keep it fairly flexible. Um, and and our reason, a recommendation is fairly well reasoned. It's not oh you have to do this. We're not we're not a private school. We can't tell them what to do. Um, and so we, we also describe the warranty and the non warranty repair mm -hmm. process and point out the distinct benefits of getting into our recommended solution. Um, whilst at the same time pointing out that we don't discriminate against anyone where it's just a user or a software problem. It's only hardware we're talking about. And yeah. probably the final point is we point out that the MacBook Air is well made, it's resilient in the hands of the teenagers, it's light, it's a good battery life, and most of our kids make it through six years of high school with the original device. And so that works out at less than a dollar a day. So who's going to argue with me at less than a dollar a day? It's a good solution. Yeah, it's absolutely. A solution. It's a solution. It's not just here's the box, give me the money kind of thing. It's um, yeah. We've been doing this a while, so they trust us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's it. When the device is in the hand of students as well, you kind of want to wrap around that support, and warranty and services and yep. everything like that and have that discussion up front so they're prepared because when the device is in the hand of a student, no doubt there are going to be breakages or yep. issues with it and um, so that's something that you know it comes it's going to happen well. it's, it's almost definitely going to happen at some point mm -hmm. in that time um we did look at the beginning we looked at lots of devices i mean we looked at hybrids um and found that you know 90 percent of those have a really bad hinge and it, your standard 13 year old is gonna it's gonna last about three minutes mm -hmm. flat those sorts of things, you know, they were not nice technology, you know, it was well specced and stuff, but it, you know, sort of an aluminium bodied uh computer with no moving parts, um, ticks a lot of boxes. 
really, yeah. in terms of a teenager laptop. And, again, it's light. Important, I mean, some of these kids, you know, they're, when they're 12 when they come here, you, you don't want to be giving them a three-kilo laptop. Um, they've already got a bag full of PE equipment, a musical instrument and, and other stuff. So um, you can't really load up kids. And the battery life was always good, especially against PCs. Um, and has, has has remained very good. And we need kids to be able to get through, you know, what are the hardcore six hours of schooling. But, you know, a lot of them have done an hour's worth of YouTube before they start their first lesson. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you've got to be able to build that in to your thinking. Anything else is unrealistic. Yeah, that's a good point as well. So um, what do you what do you think the experience is then if there is a problem with the device, if there is a breakage or a broken screen or anything like that, um, what it, how, what's the experience like from the Shenton College perspective in order to help the families navigate a repair? Um, well, um, I probably should explain. We've worked quite closely with Comp now with coming up with a slightly customised solution for that. Um, because we have technicians at Shenton College, we elected that we would sort of uh, triage in the first instance to work out whether it was just a user problem, a software problem, which we would deal with, or it was a genuine hardware problem. We saw value in this so that um, uh, anything that could just be fixed on the fly it gets fixed on the fly. Um, also that Comp now wouldn't be getting service requests coming directly from families going, it's broken, I don't know, just fix it. Um, so what we've been able to do is uh, we we raise the ticket on the on the behalf of the family. We supply the details. We put our diagnosis of what we think the software, uh, the hardware fault is. Sorry, um, the Comp now technician can order the part in advance, turn up with the part, and fix it all in one go. Um, rather than any repeat deliveries and stuff. So we think we've got a real efficiency around that. Um, And, you know, any other device that's been bought from another manufacturer that we're sending them back to where they bought it from, um, it's an insurance claim, it might be through a third party, which means they have to process that. We just think there's a real efficiency. It never really leaves Shenton College, um, Mm. the compound laptop. Um, And uh, importantly, we do own a small fleet of, uh, student loan laptops. So the kid that's got the the failed laptop, where it's a genuine warranty problem and it really isn't their problem, you know, their fault. We we give them the loan laptop while we get it fixed. They can keep going with their schooling. When the laptop gets fixed, we just swap them back over. So I think a good communications line with with you guys, um, but also being realistic about the fact that laptops will have warranty and non-warranty issues and as a school having some sort of solution a contingency plan is a really good idea as well can we ask you from your perspective or any feedback that you have gotten from families what the experience has been like when they have purchased through comp now um well this is our first year with comp now and we probably should explain that we came to comp now we we had dealt with comp now before because we bought jamf pro from you guys 10 years ago when we first started. So that was our first contact. And at that point, you didn't have a West Australian office. Um, So we were dealing with your Eastern States office, had a good run with them. Um, Yearly, I would ask uh, one of your colleagues over there whether he could sharpen his pencil because it's, and year after year he did, and we got good support out of out of Comp Now as a company. When we heard that they were establishing a West Australian office, we were quite excited about that because um, we knew you guys had a good reputation and you had a, a nice product set and stuff like that. And then we knew Vicky, uh, who I had the relationship with from a previous vendor, uh, decided to make the move. I suppose I decided I liked the way that the, the relationship that you and I had, and the, I think we understood each other and the business. And um, although it's unusual for me to jump ship uh, between vendors, um, I did jump ship at that point and um, have been very happy with this initial, um, our first run of it. Um, tricky time this year. I think we sorted out the sort of the, the marketing flyer and the pricing and stuff, and then Apple pulled the M1 chip on us and we had to do it all over again with less one than we had before so um and that perhaps was uh, a good illustration that we had a good relationship we understand how each other work you know enough about this school to know how we roll 
Um, though I think we did a very good job of having to just refashion that. I mean, we were, it wasn't a massive thing and it was fantastic that the pricing was the same. I think if the pricing had been significantly more, that would have been a lot harder to sort of sell uh, the idea, but it wasn't. Um, and obviously the new technology is pretty sexy. So um, not a not a biggie, but certainly a few couple of panicky weeks there, I think. Um, so, and I um, I know you didn't get all the sales. I don't think you ever will from our families. They they do reserve the right to use secondhand computers or shop around. Uh, we've never been to um, sort of, uh, we don't dictate what they do. We try to encourage them into our vision, but I think probably you and I are fairly happy about how it went. And I believe, and, and I honestly believe that we will just grow this from this point onwards. Yeah, I think it's about instilling that trust into the families, isn't it? That, yeah. you know, that it's it's going to give them everything that they need and we're going to give them a good service. But also from your perspective, um, if you decide to direct them to purchase through Comp Now, that they're going to get a good experience all the way yeah. through kind of thing, even through to the brake fix and non-warranty repairs yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Um, and we, we like that, you know, I, I asked for some changes, perhaps on your standard model, um, and, and you've given us that, and I think everyone's happy with that. Um, and, um, you know, that's that's always great that, that, you know, schools understand schools, you know. We understand how we work, what's possible and what isn't possible. Uh, yeah. Vendors in the commercial sector, you know, don't always understand the culture of a school and they don't have to, but they do have to understand the relationships need to be formed um, where, you know, procedures and, and things like that are fairly well ironed out because um, it happens. I mean, it happens quite, quite a lot happens quite quickly in terms of the sales mm. that it's you know, all over a couple of months and everyone wants it. Um, and, um, and then, Part B is, you know, this sort of just regular, consistent, the laptops get as fixed as quickly as possible and um, and hand it back to the, the, the students. So they can keep going. Learning is an impact. Our core business is getting kids through high school, you know. The technology yeah. needs to assist that process, not somehow be a, a hindrance to, mm. to that process. What, what about the um, moving over to the M1 chip? Did you guys have a bit of a discussion around that? Was there any was there any hesitation? Uh, well, I have one notable fanboy on my team who <laughs> did all Is my. Is that you? No, no, no. I'm not a fanboy. You know that. I'm an agnostic. <laughs> I, you know, it's just technology as far as I'm concerned. I never used a computer till I hit the workforce but I didn't go through school with one um yeah so uh he, he did all my research you, you know he 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 told me about it um we borrowed one to play with I still don't have one I'm using I'm doing this webinar on an old MacBook Air um the old model but um yeah I mean it looks pretty exciting I'm probably in the market for an M1 Mac Mini on my desk at home I'd say mm -hmm. to replace my 2012 Mac Mini which has served me still well, going still kick in still going fantastic you know it's, it's been upgraded <laughs> twice RAM and you know SSD so yeah they just keep rolling some of the old stuff yeah that's very good um and then so ha I was wondering um if you had anything over the whole time that you've been doing BYOD because is it is it 12 years that you've been doing BYOD yeah well we transitioned to the parent funded BYOD uh after about uh 20, 20 2011 2012 so about mm -hmm. 10 years of uh, of 12 you know so it was a couple of years of the DER money maybe two and a half mm -hmm. and then we 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 started to transition towards um, the the parent funder. Yeah. So so, it, I, so yeah, it's like it, you did ask that question, and I think it's on a it's an earlier question. Lessons learned is that the one? Yeah, you're that's what I was going to say. I was oh, going right. to say so over all that time. Lessons what learned. would be the main lessons that you've learned? That you okay. if any schools that are considering moving from a school owned program to a parent funded program, what would you say? Okay. Well, these these are probably. The important ones, from my perspective, you, mm -hmm. you don't realise how much an advocate for public education you are until you actually work in it, and then you think, God, you know, this company, country, really needs good public education, yeah. and obviously, you know, uh, money well spent. So, anyhow, lessons learned: um, be prepared to own your own process. 
Uh, schools have an intimate knowledge of what will and won't work in their particular circumstances, have a clearly defined set of ex expectations and procedures between the school, families and the supplier. Mm. That's point one. Point two, logistics are key. Don't leave everything to the last minute. Discuss realistic lead times with suppliers and have contingency plans in place. Two, invest in some spare laptops for temporary student loans so that warranty repair doesn't adversely affect a student's learning. That's three. Yeah. Get staff trained and on site first. We didn't have this luxury as the federal government gave us a large chunk of money and a deadline to spend it by. Some of our staff really struggled at first as they endeavoured to come up to speed and adapt more traditional teaching techniques to incorporate uh, incorporate digital learning. Yeah. That would have been great. You know, I, that was really get your staff on board first with, with the kit. Um, this is one we discussed recently when I last saw you. Technology introduces a distraction into the classroom. Staff need both strategies and support to deal with it. Teach and promote ethical use and digital citizenship, warn about the dangers and hold cyber safety seminars for the parents. Yeah. I don't think um, lots of schools um, take that into consideration. So that's really, that was a good point. Yeah, well, it does. It's it, There's a lot of distractions in modern life and that's certainly another one. Mm. Two more. Don't assume kids have all the skills. They might be avid gamers or social media celebrities, but creating organised information structures and backing up is often overlooked. Mm, Backups. Yeah. <laughs> and the last one, promote generic technology skills. Don't just focus on the specific because it all changes all the time. Yeah. And that's probably the, the, the tips I would give schools. Those comments were really handy and I think they'll be helping lots of schools kind of um, work out their programs as well. What I want to do is hand over to Andy. He's our um, BYOD portals manager based in Melbourne um, just to talk about how we manage BYOD at home now. So I'll just hand over to you, Andy. Thanks, Vicky. And thanks, Simon, for that um, really valuable insight into the way that you guys run the one-to-one -one program at Shenton College. Um, I was particularly interested to hear about the, the uptake of, of the schools program through CompNow, despite the fact that you weren't able to mandate that program for the students. And I know that's going to ring true for, for a lot of our other customers around the country, not just in Western Australian department school, but, but other schools around the country who, for whatever reason, also aren't in a position to, to mandate a particular device or a particular uh, a particular supplier. So thanks very much. Um, a, a couple of points to mention about a mandated portal versus a, a non-mandated um, program. With with a mandated program, Comp now can work with the school to create technology bundles. The technology bundle will include everything that the student needs to bring to to school on day one for the one price. This makes it easier for parents who um, want to just purchase whatever the school's recommending. A lot of parents out there that we, that we talk to, they just want to get what the school's telling them to get. So a technology bundle is a really easy way for the parents to do that. They just pay one price, add one item to the cart, and they're good to go. Um, with a non-mandated non program, we, we don't really do that in the same way. Um, we need to make sure that the offer we put forward to parents is competitive with what they will see available in, in the retail outlets. So this means we need to offer standalone products, so a laptop, a case and an insurance, and have them all as opt-in options. So if the parents are able to go and shop around at, at various retails, we need to make sure that the offer they're going to see through the schools program is comparable to that. With a non-mandated program, it's extremely useful for us to get an idea of how many parents you think will take up the school's preferred offer. And this will allow CompNow to work with the vendors like HP, Microsoft Surface, Apple, on the school's behalf to accurately forecast the required stock. Um, requesting expressions of interest from parents is, is a great way to do this. And, and what that does is it, it allows CompNow to minimise the risk of the supply constraints um, that are going to be a big part of, of, of this year, unfortunately. A couple of points on, on device selection. 
So it's really important for schools to make a decision on devices as early as possible, particularly this year. So there are a lot of supply issues with all of our technology vendors at the moment. And unfortunately, we're not expected to see that improve this year, potentially even next year. So early forecasting with vendors is going to be really important this year, even more important than ever. Um, it's really important that the school selects robust devices that have been designed to cope with the, the rigors of school life. We all know students can be pretty tough on their devices. Um, and I think Simon's experience has, has spoken to that. There will be devices that go down. That's unavoidable. Um, it's important to have processes in place to, to make sure that the kids who, who have an issue with their device um, are supported at the school. Parents who, who purchase through retailers will typically have to return the device to the place of purchase for support or repair. So choosing an education specific model that's got a, a long warranty, a warranty that can be serviced at the school is going to go a long way to making sure that those, those students who you're telling have to have a device, they're going to be able to have a device at all times. It's really important to ensure appropriate device protection is offered to parents. So that means a durable case, but it also means device insurance. It's really important to ensure that every single family is offered some kind of insurance or, or device coverage. Some parents will want to add the device to their home and contents policy, and that's absolutely fine. My suggestion would be that every parent who wants to do that is recommended to speak to their insurer first. We've spoken to a lot of parents in the past who assume that the device will be covered under a, a home and contents policy, but when it comes time to, to make a claim, they find that either it wasn't covered or the excess is, is so high that it doesn't make sense to, to make a claim. So find out from, uh, make sure parents find out what are, the, what are the coverage factors that they need to consider if they're gonna add it to their, to their home and contents insurance. The CompNow Protect Insurance policies that CompNow offer are specifically designed to cover against the kind of incidences that typically happen at school. Um, things like, you know, devices in a school bag and it's closed with a pencil or something in between the screen and the keyboard. Um, device is, is stolen from a bag when, when the child's on a bus or something like that. The, the CompNow Protect policy covers for those events. And CompNow's parent fund portals can ensure that every parent who purchases a device is offered insurance. Our system requires parents to actually tick a box to say that they understand that they've not taken up the insurance policy. Um, and this information is pulled through to their order confirmation. So it makes it very hard for parents to claim, you know, years and years down the track that they weren't aware of, of the insurance requirements. Now I'm going to talk about managing devices. So if you're running a, a, a device program at the school, are you going to manage the devices that the students are bringing? If you're not going to manage the devices, how are you going to ensure that students gain access to the learning resources and applications that they need? Um, and, and how can you ensure that all students across the board have access to the same resources? So these are considerations if, if you're not going to, to manage the device. Um, if you are going to manage the device, how will the students enroll their device into your management platform? You know, if students are required to enroll the devices themselves, how is the school going to ensure compliance? How do you know if the student's enrolled or not? And if the school is going to manually enroll the devices on the student's behalf, when is this going to be done? Is this going to be done during the school term? Is it going to be, you know, a device enrolment day before the kids come along? These are things that, that you really need to consider. CompNow can assist with an automated device enrolment so that when your students receive their devices, they're already enrolled into the school's management system. Um, we work closely with Apple and Microsoft and we can assist schools with zero touch modern deployment methodologies. CompNow was recently awarded Microsoft Surface Modern Solutions Partner of the Year for 2020. 
These annual awards recognise Microsoft partners demonstrating excellence in innovation and implementation of customer solutions based on Microsoft technology. So I'll add uh, a link in the chat if you'd like to, to read a little bit more about this. It's, it's quite interesting what, what Microsoft said about CompNow and our, our capabilities in this area. If you're considering a Microsoft Surface program for your school, CompNow can actually plug you into programs that give you access to our engineers to assist your team in building and deploying new modern deployment workflows um, and can even fund training for your technicians or for your teaching staff around any of the Microsoft suite of products. One thing I will say about device management, if, if you're going to manage devices that are owned by the family, it is important to get the family to agree to this management. So it's, it's really important for the school to clearly outline the reasons why you want to manage a family owned device and to relate those reasons back to the school's duty of care to the students um, and also to so that the school can ensure that all students have access to the same learning materials. It's a really key thing to communicate to, uh, to parents before you manage a device that they actually own. And now finally, I'm gonna talk a little bit about warranty support. Warranty is, is, is really important with any technology program. It's, it's important even if it is a parent funded program. So what I would say is ensure that there is a really simple place, a simple process in place to manage repairs so that students feel really confident that they can get the support they need to have issues resolved. We've, we've heard about schools and, and students in, in the past who, although the school had a great um, support agreement in place, some of the students still feel really uncomfortable about going and reporting an issue. And so what happens is they continue to use a device, even if it has an issue, and even though they could potentially get that device um, issue resolved at school. So really important to have clear and simple repair processes in place so that students know they can just go to the IT area and, and get the help they need. CompNow can support schools who have a one-to-one -one program through CompNow with on-site repairs, like we do for Shenton College, for example. Um, for regional schools, schools that, that aren't close to a CompNow office, we can often implement scheduled pickups to get devices back to CompNow for assessment and repair. So uh, I think something that Simon mentioned was we, we, we put our, our standard repair offering to him and, and the school. That looks good. There was a few things that, that Simon wanted tweaked things that um, you know, specifically spoke to the experience at Shenton, we were able to implement those changes and, and give Shenton College a program that's really tailored for their needs. Um, very happy to do the same for your school. Um, something else that Simon said that was, that was really good um, was about the loan device program. Are you gonna offer loan devices or, or some kind of a hot swap program for your students? I think it's really important if, if the school's saying this is a learning tool that you have to bring to school, I think it's really important that the school recognises that A, some devices are going to have issues and B, have something in place to support the students when, when something happens to their device. Um, that can be you know, a loan device from the school's own fleet um, that's issued to the, to the student temporarily and then given back to the school when the student's own device is, is brought back. Um, or depending on the vendor, it could even be a hot swap program where a student will come in with a fault, the school will diagnose the fault, and if it's deemed to be a warrantable fault, a, a replacement can be issued immediately. The student's already saving their work on OneDrive or, or something similar to that, so they can just log in to the new device, be up and working, and then that becomes their device moving forwards. When the vendor replaces the, the faulty one, that goes back into the school's hot swap program. So depending on, on I guess, the vendor and, and how you run the school program, there are a few different ways that we can support you with, uh, with warranty. So these are a few of the elements that we believe go into making a successful one-to-one -one program. There are many considerations before students arrive with a shiny new device on the first day of term. We believe our many years of experience in assisting schools with one-to-one -one programs, both school funded or, or parent funded, 
um, can really help your school design a robust program. So that's all from me. Thanks for listening and I'll hand back to you, Vicky. Oh, thanks, Andy. That was really good, really helpful. Um, so I just wanted to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, if there is anybody out there that does need any support with um, looking at a possible BYOD program or even if you have a BYOD program and you'd like to just review how you can do those, feel free to reach out to me um, and I'm happy to chat to you and support you through that process. But thank you so much for joining us today, Simon. That was really, really forward to kind of get an understanding of how you guys have um, worked with the BYOD program there at Shenton. Um, and yeah, thanks everyone.